Hey guys, Chris and Lindsay here, and we're excited to talk to you today about one of the most frequently asked questions that we get now that we've lived for almost a year in our fully remodeled Class C RV. Yeah, so we have a few things. Almost, I mean, we set this up to be after living in our truck camper for two years, we knew what we wanted. So this RV for us is almost perfect, but there are just just a few things that we would change. Yep, we definitely thought through all the decisions that we made, but as you know, or as you may not know, we did this on a really tight budget. In fact, the entire remodel process we did for under $8,000. Links in the description if you wanna go and see all the different projects we did and how we did them for that. When it came to the budget, we did skimp on some things that looking back now, we would definitely make some different decisions. And so those decisions are really based upon the comfort that we have in this motorhome and this RV, uh, as well as the power and the water setups because we love to spend a lot of time boondocking and we found this RV was not really manufactured for boondocking. Yeah, it wasn't really equipped well for that. <laughs> Do you think in 1999 they even had the term boondocking? I don't know. I don't know. I think this, this RV was built to go from one campground to the next Just where there are full hookups. Plug but. in from one campground to the next and that is what we're going to address right now are these several things that would change, that we would change if we could go back and do this rebuild, the remodel from the ground up. So number one, we would change the size of our freshwater tank. 30 gallons. That's the same amount that we had on our truck camper. That's all we have. And yet this RV is three times bigger, can accommodate a much larger family, and yet it's only 30 gallons. So if we could go back while we had everything torn apart, while we were considering how we were going to move things around and all the things that we did to this to this RV, we definitely would have added a larger water tank. As it is, we're forced to carry spare water bottles, which is not the end of the world, but we do carry extra five-gallon jerry cans. We fill them up as we need to. But man, it is, it's hard to see some of our friends that have like 60 or 80 gallon water. Yeah. I'm like, man, we're wouldn't, jealous. <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome if we could just have that much water and we could go and boondock for a, a lot longer, a lot more comfortably. So without moving, that is definitely the first thing that we would change if we could go back is we would invest in somehow configuring a much larger water tank. Number two we would have chosen a different mattress. Absolutely. So when we were remodeling this RV, so when we bought this RV, it did not come with a mattress. It had no mattress in it. Um, most RVs, when you buy new or used, you're probably gonna get a crappy mattress. So, so one of the first- I would have thrown it yeah. out anyway. If it came yeah. with a mattress, that would have yeah. been the first thing I got rid of because I don't wanna sleep on a used mattress. That's just not me. But because we were on a tight budget, we just bought like a standard memory foam mattress off of Amazon. Which was okay. Yeah, it, it did us good for, you Ooh. know, almost the year that we had it. Until I realized how much my back hurts. So I have lower back pain like a lot of Americans. I actually have herniated and ruptured discs. So it's a pretty serious deal. And I take sleeping serious like we all should. So I was finding with this mattress, this memory foam mattress, I was actually having to make it more firm by putting sleeping pads underneath my 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 back and so i was making it more firm whereas and then the mattress was a little too firm for me so, so we we couldn't win um and we were just getting by so when rvmattress.com by brooklyn bedding reached out to us and said almost at the same time as we were considering this this uh question would you like to try one of our mattresses we'll give you a 120 day sleep trial we were like yes no brainer <laughs> absolutely so that's what we did we chose the aurora hybrid mattress and a short queen it fits perfect in our rv it is amazing you think it's amazing yeah it's like sleeping on a cloud so spoiler alert <laughs> Lindsay just gave it away we've been sleeping on this mattress already for two weeks and in two weeks i can tell you we don't need to go to the 120 days it is awesome I'm sleeping much better. I don't have to add the extra uh, mattress pads for myself. Lindsay has the soft comfort that she wants. It's firm enough for me as I'm sleeping in there that my back is fully supported. It has been literally, literally night and day difference between the mattress that we had. So going back in time, I think it would definitely be worth investing in this particular mattress just for that comfort. And these mattresses are great because they are made for RVs. You can get them in different custom sizes they have kings they have queens they make them in short 
all different sizes. They make them for your bunk beds. They have different types. They don't just have hybrid. They have memory foam. We just went with the hybrid just to get that extra support that we knew we needed. The website is fantastic, by the way, and the support for picking out which mattress might be right for you. Because if you're like us, again, we just bought the first mattress that we found within kind of our budget uh, because we didn't have any mattress at all with the RV, as Lindsay said. So go to the website and you can shop the different uh, size options and the different firmness levels. There's three different firmness levels you can choose from and there's tons of information to help you pick out the perfect mattress. So that's exactly what we did. We were able to find this particular mattress and I have no regrets. Yep. And, and along with the 120 night sleep trial, it comes with a 10 year warranty. The mattresses are made in the USA and Arizona. They use no toxic materials. There's no off gassing. And as soon as we opened uh, the bag and, and got it in the RV, or as soon as we got it in the RV and opened the bag, it inflated right to its size within seconds. Which was crazy. Like, I almost felt like I had to jump off this thing <laughs> because it was literally, I cut the plastic and then poof. And that's to say the memory foam that we bought before, like a lot of mattresses that are out there, they are now coming in the rolled up packages. Um, but the mattress that we bought off of Amazon ended up taking what? It almost took a several day. hours. Yeah, it took a long time for it to expand. And, and it, it was... didn't actually expand all the way. And so it, it's this thing was just. I mean, it was amazing. We thought it was. We thought we were gonna have to lay it out in the morning and wait and all give afternoon. It a few hours, but nope. Yep. It was ready. It was it ready up, to sleep on as soon was, as we opened it. And it was. I mean, it, it literally. I can't say night and day. I mean, it's it's been absolutely fantastic to have. I'm super excited about it. So if you would like to purchase a mattress from Brooklyn Bedding, you can go to rvmattress.com and you can use our code WANDER for 20% off your purchase. Even better, go to rvmattress.com forward slash WANDER <laughs> and use our code WANDER for 20% off your mattress. Either way, we just wanted you to know how much we appreciate having this mattress. And I can tell you, I'm not sending it back. No. I mean, I don't, I don't need the next 100 days to make that decision. It is made, yep. and I am extremely happy that we made that decision. And one more great thing, because they wrap it up, it comes in like, a, a, I mean, it's not a small box, but it's small enough that you can have it shipped to the campground that you're staying at. It was, it was great. So that's what we had. We had it shipped to the campground we were staying at, got it right inside. It fit inside just fine. And the third thing that we would change is is what we would add an on-demand water heater i was thinking i'd get a new traveling partner what i'm gonna you deserve a slap for that <laughs> here comes huckleberry so <laughs> on-demand water heater why would we go with an on-demand water heater because we're spoiled why else would we want an on-demand water heater the reality yeah. is it's really nice and convenient. It would to be have nice to have. <laughs> it's not a must have, but since you asked the question, or since we often get to ask the question, what would you change? By the time we took apart the kitchen when we were putting in the awesome butcher block countertop and the new sink and faucet, our water heater was tucked away there. That would have been the perfect time for us to go it. ahead and get rid of the old one, figure out how to put a new one in, and that was on demand because it really would be great at times. Not all the time, we're not spoiled. We said we love to boondock. We go out and sometimes Lindsay doesn't shower for four or five days <laughs> and it shows. But it would be nice to be able to just open up the faucet and have the hot water. As it is, we burn quite a bit of propane. We have to heat up six gallons of water um, just to get a little bit of hot, like hot, hot water if we want to wash the dishes mm -hmm. or if we, Lindsay wants to wash her face or, uh, or we just want hot water for whatever reason. Take a shower. And, and saving on propane, that's a good enough reason for me. Yeah, not to mention, I mean, propane prices, just like everything, going through the roof. So anywhere we can cut back, it would have been a good upfront investment that we did not invest in at the time that if I could go back in time, I think that would be a good thing to do. And number four on the list. So with boondocking in mind. Oh, you're going to go which there. Which we love. You're yep. going to go there. We should have gone with lithium batteries. I know what you're going to say, but told lithium's so. <laughs> so expensive or yeah. told you so for those of you with lithium. But when we started out on this journey, first off, when we had our truck camper, we had standard flooded lead acid batteries and that I wish I could go back and slap yeah, myself. They were a three. pain in the butt. They were a pain in the butt. We abused them, especially in Baja. 
we bounced them around so much they they were just they were awful so we got all excited when we upgraded to AGM we we're like man we made a great decision because we really couldn't afford lithium batteries but what we didn't understand is the value behind lithium batteries so the difference between what we have now with AGM and lithium is pretty substantial we're going to be installing awesome enduro power lithium batteries we'll tell you about that so as we were considering the idea of upgrading now from the AGM batteries that we have, we have 420 amp hours of AGM battery capacity, which is really only about 200 to 250 usable amp hour uh, capacity because you don't want to go below 60% of what you have with AGM. We're now looking to upgrade to lithium where we can go virtually down to nothing. So when we came across Enduro Power and we started to research more and find out this was a great value for a battery. Um, Enduro Power is not the most expensive battery. It's definitely not the cheapest battery. It's a very good price point. It's within range of what we could afford if we could go back in time. It is definitely something that we could afford for the value that this battery offers. And some of the selling points for why we're really happy we went with it is number one, I think overall, it's just a smaller battery. Yeah, and they're lighter weight. They're way lighter weight than what we have now. Yeah, so the size in itself is 25% smaller case size than comparable lithium batteries. Enduro Power has it uh, dialed in when it comes to that because size matters when it comes to Yeah, and we have batteries. a very small battery compartment that we keep our batteries in. And two of their 200 amp hour batteries fit perfectly where our three... 140 amp hour AGM batteries are yeah. and, it, and it just worked out perfect. So as we were considering like we, we've honestly we've been considering upgrading to lithium batteries and like but the specs for all the different options that were out there made it so it wasn't going to be compatible with what we had. Either we were going to have to go with less battery capacity or um, less battery capacity. That was just the way it was going to be. And we stumbled across Enduro Power with this 25% smaller case. It literally fits exactly two of these 200 amp hour lithium batteries are going to fit exactly in our battery uh, our battery box and that is really awesome for us because we designed the battery space around the batteries that we had and that was a regret that i have you should never design anything in an rv remodel based on what you currently have you should definitely look around and say what would be a most ideal if i were to upgrade in the future what would be most compatible for this so we built this entire battery space around the existing AGM batteries that we had, and it turns out these batteries are going to fit perfect. So the best point about Enduro power batteries, not just the fact that they're lithium, that you can run them down virtually to nothing, that you have, in this case, over 3,500 charge cycles, uh, that they're maintenance-free, that you can mount them in virtually any way other than upside down. They can take a beating, you can go on dirt roads like we like to do in boondocking and they can shake and rattle around and you're not gonna damage them. All those are fantastic things, but what you're gonna find with Enduro Power Batteries is the customer service is phenomenal. Whether you're shopping for the battery and you don't know where to begin, they will walk you through over the phone, through email, whatever's best for you. They'll walk you through trying to understand how many batteries do I actually need? What kind of battery capacity do I need if I want to run these appliances or these devices? They won't be pushy in selling their, their batteries, um, which is nice. You can go shop elsewhere, but after you talk with their customer service and after you understand how they're trying to help you, you're going to end up going with Enduro Power Batteries, hands down. And there's a really good chance Harrison, one of the co-founders, co-owners of the company, it's a good chance you're going to be talking with him directly because that's how passionate he is about making sure that all of his customers, whether you're a current customer or a potential future customer, that you get that quality customer support. I'm gonna now be able to run my air fryer. That's exciting. Which we replaced our microwave with. So that's exciting. I'm gonna be able to bake bread and reheat, heat up, reheat food and all that with my air fryer with these batteries. And that's really cool. In addition to, we're gonna have the Instapot, we're gonna be able yep, to run. Yeah, the Instapot. We won't run our AC, but that's fine because yeah. I feel like we hardly ever use our AC. We we usually camp with the weather, so. Yep. <laughs> You've got also all the hair doohickeys. I oh, obviously, yeah. I don't know about, you know, curling hair because I, <laughs> I don't have that to do. These batteries are going to, basically, we're going to double our capacity in the same amount of space and for about half to a third of the weight when it's all said and done. So we're gonna cut weight from our RV, which is always important. It's always good to know the weight that you're carrying with your with your RV. These batteries being lightweight, they're even, for lithium batteries, 
they're more lightweight than the, comp the competition for the same size battery. So lithium in general is going to be lighter weight, but these are even lighter than the competition. We're not going to name the competition. You know who's out there, um, but we're really happy that we're going with Enduro Power batteries. And we're going to show you the install of that on those later on when we switch out the AGM. So stay tuned if you want to know more about that. If you want to find out more information on Enduro Power batteries, you can go to enduropowerbatteries.com or click on the link in the description. Number five on the list. He's making a stinky face. So what does that mean? It means our toilet has um, some improvement. Yeah, our, to our composting toilet, our DIY composting toilet, there's some improvements we could make. I'm happy, 100% happy we went with the composting toilet. It has been night and day for us while we're out boondocking to be able to not waste part of our 30 gallons of water that we are already saying is too little. You have to flush, flush the, toilet. the toilet. Plus have to worry about dumping a small black tank. Yeah. So. so what we've done with our toilet, you can go back and watch the video about how we built it and why we built it. Um, but with the composting toilet, the one thing that I left off that Lindsay was nagging me about as we were designing it, I just wasn't comfortable at the time, was building some kind of a ventilation system where we could move some of the stinky air out. So as it is, we're driving down the road and Lindsay sees a moose out the, the window. <laughs> she grabs her camera and what does she do? Roll down the window. And as soon as she does that, we're like, ooh, Whew. there's a toilet. That stinks. It literally stinks <laughs> when we roll down our window when we're driving. So it's a small thing, we've learned to deal with it, but there are a couple things that I think I would go back and re-engineer about our particular design. Um, we did not write a book, we didn't sell a manual, we're not pushing our specific design. In fact, we took a couple people's ideas and we kind of merged it for what would work for us. Um, but there are a couple things like putting some form of a P-trap uh, or a PVC uh, valve that we could turn on and off that would kind of close yeah, the close off. off because we we um, piped our urine diverter to our black tank. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about there. Yeah. So, I mean, the simplest thing to do is we, we, we did build plan B, which is that we could have the urine diverter go directly into a gallon container, and then we could take that out every so often and we could dump that. And that wouldn't, the smell wouldn't necessarily build up there because we could totally cap off the black tank. But we chose to do something where we could take advantage of having a 15 gallon or 20 gallon black tank by diverting the urine into the black tank and in doing that because there's a free flowing hole through the hose air is now allowed to come up from the black tank and visit us as we're driving with the window down i said visit us it's more, <laughs> it's, it's, more it's more like haunt us yeah it's like the ghost of, of christmas past it's coming to visit us as we're driving with the windows down so i think i would change that a little bit we were rushed yeah we yeah we were rushed it was at and, the end and we, just and we do have a little the thing we came up with that does help with the smell we have a little, a little rubber plug, stopper a little rubber stopper that we just put in the hole we just have to remember that we put it there <laughs> otherwise we make a mess and i'll let you use your imagination about that and last but not least number six and this is kind of this is more of like a mistake on our part than something to change mm, cosmetic but, too yeah cosmetic so not super important but just bothers me a little bit <laughs> your plants <laughs> no the throw pillows My plant, no no oh, you wish <laughs> that's my number seven and my number eight Lindsay's <laughs> gonna cut this video off at number six with what she's about to tell you but okay so i regret having throw pillows and 17 different that's varieties not it. of plants that's not it okay so i wish we would have cocked our cabinets what does that mean well by that i mean that after driving and traveling, the paint has separated, and I don't know what it's called, but the, we have two-piece cabinets, and I didn't know this when we were remodeling the camper. You didn't do that on purpose? So the paint has separated in, like, the decorative part of the cabinet. So when we remodeled our truck camper, our cabinets weren't like that. They weren't two pieces, so yeah, the paint never separated. Stuff. So I didn't think that we would have to caulk our cabinets when we painted in here. Now the paint has separated and the cracks and stuff. And it, I mean, it doesn't look horrible, but I see it and it bothers me a little bit and we need to fix it Yeah. eventually. So if you are looking to remodel your camper, 
and to paint just know that if you have real wood cabinets like we do which is only common in the older models yeah, really the older model cabinets the newer models are going are really the older cheap model wood. rvs yeah. yeah so if you have two-piece style you know oak cabinets or whatever wood cabinets in your rv just know that you should caulk the seams uh, with like an elastic type caulk before you paint i agree I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> and I think that's it. No, Just no, 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 six, no. right? No. We have seven. More. Seven. The seventh thing that I would do differently if we could go back and remodel this one year ago is I get rid of those dang throw pillows. <laughs> no, Look at I them. wouldn't. Throw, throw, throw away pillows. <laughs> that's what I call them. Throw away pillows. How about hit your husband over the head pillow? <laughs> Huckleberry doesn't like when we get all excited like that. All right, so, everybody tell Chris the throw pillows are worth it. If you're still watching okay. at this point, <laughs> vote for me. No, vote for Lindsay. Vote for Chris. <laughs> vote for Lindsay. <laughs> or just vote for Huckleberry. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you've made it this far, we appreciate you taking the time to learn from us and learn from our pseudo mistakes. Can't call them mistakes because we did things, we did think them out really well and we did the best that we could. But if you're getting into remodeling your RV right now or your motorhome, your travel trailer, and you're thinking about, well, what did Chris do that I should do better? Those are the seven things that I would recommend that you do. Definitely fight your wife on the throw pillows. But that wasn't my choice because happy wife, happy life. And here we are as happy as can be knowing that we've got an awesome mattress. We're about to upgrade our batteries. We do have a workaround for both the toilet and the, the water, water. Tank. we're okay with the hot water heater doing what it's doing maybe somewhere down the road we'll, we'll work upgrade. on that and we do have all the materials to be able to take the cabinets apart and fix them um, so we're in a good spot and we hope you are in a good spot too wherever you are thanks for taking time to watch this thanks for being a part of our journey if you haven't already done so please subscribe to subscribe. our channel subscribe to the button to the couch to the button no, there's a button right there oh, okay. in the right corner. there's a button right there it's called the wonder subscribe subscribe, subscribe. I'm still figuring this out four <laughs> years later. Subscribe to our channel. Make a send us a comment. Make a comment. Or is it over there? Subscribe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we still don't know what we're doing. And that's hopefully why you love us is because we are trying to learn this as we go. But thanks for being a part of our journey. Join our journey. Leave us a comment. Like this video. Share it with your friends and family. Tell everybody about Call to Wander and how we're helping you pursue the abundant life on the road. Thanks for being a part of this and we will See you when we see you.